When people say, do you think you're inspirational? I have to say no. I don't see myself as inspirational. I'm just me. I'm nothing special. I'm enjoying my life. I'm making the most of it. If it inspires someone to do it, then that's lovely. The things that inspire me in life is when I see other people taking on their challenges, when they look at something and think, I'm not sure I can do it, but I'll give it a go. If they don't succeed, it's not a big deal, but they've given it a go, and that's so important in life. So many people, I think, sit and say, I'd love to do this, but I don't think I can. I take my hat off to every person who says, I'm going to try it. The fact they've given it a go to me, that is an inspiration. My name is Dean Dunbar and I'm a registered blind adventurer and extreme sports enthusiast based in Perthshire, Scotland. Since 1998, I have participated in well over 100 activities and challenges around the world and set over 25 world firsts. When I'm not on an adventure, I'm either planning and training for my next one or writing and talking about my last one. The challenge that's been set is to do the Caledonian Canal, so ocean to ocean basically. We're going to go from Fort William over on the west coast to, uh, to Inverness on the east coast paddling stand-up paddle boards. But obviously we're doing it with Dean who's blind, registered blind. My condition is called rod and cone dystrophy. Uh, now, although I've had this for like, what, 20, 30 years or something like that, I've never been that interested in it. So I can't, I, what I can tell you about it is that the rods and cones are in the eyes. They see colour, they see light and all that. There's millions of these and basically mine are dying off. It's very hard to describe because it's just something I live with. Uh, when someone says, describe me, you know, what happens each year or what happens all the time. All I can say is that some of the things I did last year I can't do this year and probably what I'm doing today I might not be able to do next year. If you spend a few days with Dean, he'll look like he, he manages really well and you wouldn't really know he was blind. I think he can actually see a lot less than you would believe or he would let on. I don't see faces. I tend to recognise people by the, the colour of the clothing. So if I'm out with them that evening, I'll, I'll clock on that Bob over there's got a red jumper on, T Tony's got a blue jumper, and the next time I see red, it's got to be Bob, and the next time I see blue, it's got to be Tony. If someone else comes in with those colours on, then I kind of embarrass myself slightly. <laughs> Generally, the biggest challenge for this is just the distance you've got to cover each day, yeah. It's a long way to paddle. Probably on our longest day, got a good eight to ten hour day. When we paddle, you use a lot of um, references, visual references. So you, you, there's a nice point, you'll paddle to there and you'll see what's there, you're going to have a look, and then you'll paddle past, and then you'll get the next point. We do it all the time. When you can't see past the end of your board, that's where it's going to be hard for him because he's got no visual reference to paddle to. When you teach people to stand up paddleboard, you get them to look at the horizon, not look down. As soon as they start looking at the horizon, they can balance, but he can't look at the horizon. So I don't know the science behind how he manages to balance so well, because that, that's the challenge really. Any rough water, any cross chop, any boat wakes, especially with the weather forecast, 30 to 40 knots of wind. When I'm out on the water, especially when the water's really rough, I'm pretty much looking at the nose of my board. I'm not looking at anything else. I sometimes try to look ahead of me just to keep myself and my body straight, but I'm not always seeing anything. If someone could tell me that my sight would never get any worse than today, I'd take that. But if they said they could cure it totally, I'm not sure I'd want that. I suppose it's hard to understand that from someone who can see full sight and wonder why wouldn't you want that back. But the last time I had full sight, I was nine years old. 36 years ago was the last time I could see properly. I can't remember what I saw back then. So I've no real desire to get back to see something that I can't remember. If I was to get full sight tomorrow, then I'd be thinking now I've got to learn to drive, I've got to change my way of life. There's lots of things I'd have to do, whereas at the moment I have routines, I know where things are. Life's fairly easy for me in a way, you know, I've made it that way. I know where I keep the salt and pepper and all these things. I suppose as well, there's got to be a bit of fear in there that if I got my sight fully back, I don't know how my life would be. 
and I don't know if it would be better or it would be worse, whereas at the moment I know where it's at. The thing that got me started in extreme sports was a charity tandem skydive. I was working at the blind school uh, and we wanted to raise some money for the school and one of the guys that I worked with had suggested doing a, you know, doing a skydive. It was, it was kind of a weird feeling, falling forward, doing a somersault, then everything going quiet. And I couldn't see the ground coming to me, I didn't get the ground rush, but I was getting something. And I realised halfway through it was some sort of adrenaline rush I was getting and basically by the time we hit the ground, I was buzzing off my head. It was like I'd just taken some sort of manic drug that was just, you know, it was just totally off it. And since then, I've, I'm, I've been looking for another fix. Now my life is about getting the next fix. Showered by cutlery, yeah, strays they follow me, just divided by your angry arm. Yeah, I need a sound machine to find this older me. He wouldn't let my mother come to home. You know, I said, I won't have my boo. I got so many gears up to now. So yesterday we set off from uh, Fort William. In total, we, we did just under, I think, 30k. Just need the same winds today to be blowing us in the right direction. We can crack out another 40, 50k today. You know, when you get given news that you're going blind, I think there's normally two options that people take. They choose one or the other. It's kind of, it's, it's kind of sad. Uh, when we had the school, we had the kids there. Basically, it was almost they were institutionalised. You know, they were maybe brought there from about the age of three or four. Went there right till they were 16. They then had a, a college built onto the school. So then some of the kids were staying there till they were 18, 19. Then when they left that, they, they left the, the, the sheltered life and went out into the big bad world. Uh, and uh, two or three of the lads uh, didn't make it. Uh, they took their own lives. And uh, that, that's, the, that's the other route. You know, you either get on with life and enjoy it, or you, know, you, you take the other route and it's, yeah, it's pretty tough. We're now uh, at the end of day two. Today was going to be the biggest day, uh, and it certainly proved to be the toughest day. But I think we've knocked out about something like 50k, uh, which on its own is pretty good going. But to have that added on to 28 yesterday, and then the conditions we had today as well, with the wind and the, the chop and everything, was just mental. We've just done Loch Ness, pretty much the whole of Loch Ness, so it's really good. Once again, Dean has impressed no end in being able to ride the bumps without being able to see them. In these conditions, it's tough enough as it is without, you know the vision thing. But yeah, it's a tough, tough day. I think the last, what, three hours has been mentally tough. My eyes are totally shot. I, at points I was seeing things that weren't there. My head's pretty wasted from all the concentration. But the last three hours I just kind of thought we'll just go nowhere. And then all of a sudden Jason spotted something in the distance, got his GPS out and went, that's doors, it's only a mile away. At that point I could have sprinted that last mile, it was fantastic. So it's uh, day three, uh, last little, I think it's about eight kilometres to go. We're just going to take it easy this morning, finish off our 8k and then that'll be us done. From the waist up I'm pretty much okay, uh, from the waist down my legs are just totally shot away. So I'm, I'm not looking forward to having to kneel down and stand up too often. Once I'm on my board I'm staying up and I'm only getting off when I get to Inverness. <laughs> The reason I'm pushing myself on that is it's purely it's the adrenaline thing and the, the fact that I can kind of step away and say I've done it. I suppose for me, being registered blind, you know, people kind of look at you and think, oh, do you tune pianos or do you weave baskets? You know, you're registered blind, that's obviously what you do. 
and I suppose I'm just trying to show people that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm almost normal. You know, not quite normal, but I'm almost normal. You know, I want people to get out there and get off the bums and go out and try something, maybe get a bit fitter and find some a new passion in life instead of it being TV or computers. You know?